All right, so as Marilyn said, I'm going to be talking just sort of give a brief overview of the research that I'm working on for my dissertation. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of history about how I got to sort of the questions that I'm looking at and then go through more or less what I did this summer. And I've also brought uh, some couple, like a little tray here full of artifacts. Um, from some of the sites that I worked at, so just if people want to come up and and see just exactly what we were pulling out of the ground, um, you can come up after I'm done talking and have a look. All right, so so just again to give a little bit of a background uh, history or information as to how I got started on this particular topic, and it goes back to my master's research that I did at East Carolina University where I did my, my thesis on our archaeology, <laughs> <laughs> um, investigating piracy in the archaeological record. So what I did with that was I went around and I tried to find some sites that had a sort of terrestrial component um, that was somehow related to piracy. And there's not really a whole lot to work with. And so I looked at these sites and I, I did um, sort of an, an artifact uh, category analysis. So I grouped them into to categories and groups, sort of loosely based on Stanley South's work. And then I compared them to some other sites uh, just to see, or to see if there was any similarities between these 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 sites um, that might indicate sort of some sort of pattern that would be related then to piracy. But the problem that I ran into, and that um, my dissertation or my sorry my thesis committee raised, and that other people have also raised when sort of just trying to look generally at piracy in, in archaeology, both on land sites and also in reference to shipwreck sites, is that there's not really a good way to tell pirates as a maritime group from other mariners. And so um, from, from this experience then, what I'm drawing on is both um, the use of comparative work, um, this terrestrial focus again, is that sort of what I'm interested in, and also this question of how can we determine or can we determine what a maritime culture looks like in the archaeological record. And so if we can't do that, we can't say this is what a maritime culture in certain general looks like, then we can't look at you know, even more specialized groups within that. So that's sort of where I'm going with this. And so what I've done since then, uh, sort of to set, set up my sort of theoretical background for all of this, is to sort of look at this idea of what maritime culture is. And so I've uh, defined sort of four basic categories of information uh, to try and determine what this is. And those are locale, exploitation of maritime resources, cultural integration of the maritime environment, a relationship to maritime material culture. So I'll just go through these really briefly. So locale is pretty self-evident, or fairly, so mostly it's, it's a geographic reference. So obviously the Bahamas, if we're going to talk about them in specific, they're an island group. You can't really get much more of a maritime context than being an island or even in a chain of islands. Um, there's also sort of a, a social dynamic to locale as well, so it's sort of how, um, how society conceives of itself or what's it, what its sort of broader place is. So there's also a social dynamic to that as well, but I'm not going to go into that a whole lot at this point. Um, so the second category then is the exploitation of maritime resources. And this has both a, a natural uh, dimension, which is pretty self-evident. So if you're exploiting natural resources, you know, fishing, you know, using seaweed, um, other maritime animals that people can eat. Um, also, other resources like, for example, salt um, is a big maritime resource that people, a natural resource that um, is exploited in the Bahamas that people don't always think about. But then also cultural maritime resources as well. So exploiting things like, like shipwrecks in terms of you know, the salvage, um, which was, again, something big in the Bahamas. Um, but then also sort of using the maritime environment for other cultural purposes, such as transportation, communication, trade, and so forth as well. So we've got this sort of double, um, this dual uh, dynamic here for maritime resources. Uh, for cultural integration of the maritime environment, um, these are just a couple of examples of that. So shipwrecks, land remains, you know, how people name their geography, um, the zones of transport. Also, you know, integrating the maritime environment in other ways, so in terms of ritual. So uh, this here is a crossing the line ritual for sailors that were going over uh, crossing the equator for the first time, which is still a maritime ritual that is enacted by modern sailors and it has a very long history. So just, again, a couple of brief examples to get you introduced to these concepts. <laughs> um, so then, uh, relationship with maritime material culture. You know, how do people use you know, these, spe these specialized technology in their lives? 
And just, you know, to give, again, three basic subgroupings within that, we have labor. So it could be something that you use to work with, like our, our sailor gentleman here, who's, you know, leaning on the, on the shrouds like, of, of the ship, you know, his you know, particular clothing that he wears um, for his employment, um, the specialized gear that he carries in order to perform his, you know, his work routine. Um, you can also have sort of more of an economic association, so you might be involved in the production of goods, which is then uh, uh, sort of for maritime labor. So uh, this is our rope work. I think it's an image from Mystic Seaport. I'm not 100% sure on that. And then also um, for display. So people who use maritime elements um, and decoratively. So for example here, um, this is again an image from Harbor Island, um, and it's of the Queen Conch, uh, Conch Salad Shack. And you can see that they've got the actual conch shells that are just you know, set directly into the, the boutique. And, then, and this is also things like you know, people using you know, lobster traps as you know, decorative lawn elements or what have you. So just using this you know, sort of as, as a display element to sort of show your appreciation or association with sort of the broader mar uh, maritime culture. Um, uh, also as part of display, you get sort of use of um, this is uh, scrimshaw items that would have been made for, for um, people at home by sailors. And so that brings a different kind of connection as well between maritime culture, you know, uh, material culture, rather, and people. So um, the, the wives who had been using, for example, this fancy pie crimper here, um, wouldn't necessarily have ever been to sea themselves, but they have this sort of tangible material relationship with maritime goods that connects them to people who are far away. So again, it's, you know, they have this material culture um, aspect as well that helps sort of cement them as a maritime culture. So then moving on more specifically uh, to, to my project, um, I got sort of interested in the Bahamas again because of my research at ECU, um, where I was sort of looking at uh, piracy in the broader uh, 18th century historical context. And so I got interested in the Bahamas from that. And was, when I was looking for a place um, that I might be able to do my research, the Bahamas caught my eye. And sort of I, I threw up more historical uh, research, sort of narrowed in on Harbor Island as a legitimate or a place that would have um, the ability to answer some sort of the questions that I'm looking at. So just to give you an idea of where it is, we're looking at the Bahamas in general. Um, so this is Florida here and Cuba, um, which has um, some interesting historical um, consequences, I suppose, um, because of course these were mostly in the 17th and 18th century controlled by the Spanish, and then the Bahamas were taken over by the British. So um, there's some interesting relationships that developed because of that location as well. So uh, Harbor Island is just off the northeast coast of Eleuthera. So Eleuthera is this long, skinny island here. And this is New Providence, which is uh, where Nassau is located, in the capital of the Bahamas. And then again, if you look at just a, an image of, uh, of Eleuthera, you've got it just up here. It's a tiny little island just off the northeast coast of the top of Eleuthera. And then to narrow it in again, again, this is the, the head of Eleuthera up here in Harbor Island, and then a more clear image of the island itself. And then while I have this map here, I'm just going to point out some of the um, some of the things that you can really get in, uh, that I really like for satellite imaging. So this is both this is all from Google Google Maps actually, um, but you can see um, this right here down at the <coughs> southern end of the island was where the natural harbor was. And today there's a, a, an entrance to the harbor up here, but this is actually created. It's man-made. They dynamited some of the reefs that are in that area because it was more convenient just to go along the top to go all the way down. But so this formed a very natural harbor. You can see the deep water here, right along in this area on the island, um, where the, the concentration of the population is. So it was, it was called Harbor Island because it did have this great natural harbor um, that people could use. It was very well protected, as you can see. It's, it only had this tiny little entrance. And this is, you know, it's very, very narrow. It's a musket shot across. Um, and so there was, or at least um, early 18th century maps, mentioned there being a fort down here in this area that, of course, would be very uh, effective at protecting the entrance to that harbor. And then, of course, um, this is the Atlantic coast here, and this is pretty much um, as far um, as far east as you can get, and then it's just the Atlantic until you get over um, to Africa, pretty much. So then just, again, this is very condensed, because I don't want to take up, you know, too, too, well, here I could go on and on. Um, but just to give you a brief history, 
So the islands were initially settled by uh, Native American population, the Lucayans, but they were 